Hey folks, this software session is aimed at making a document digitally accessible. This is an important and legal practice for users with visual impairments. A digitally accessible document can be read by assistive technology and, if designed correctly, will meet Federal Section 508 requirements. Now, please note, this is a rapid video that does not cover every aspect of Section 508, nor does it cover full WCAG 2.0 accessibility. We offer a live two-hour workshop that goes into more detail than this video, and if you need comprehensive education on accessibility, we have resources available via our lynda.com video training service. This video is chaptered, so click on the chapter you want to view the portion of the video. Let's begin. The first thing to do is locate the original source of your material. This should be in a Word document or some other editable source such as Publisher, InDesign, etc. This session will focus strictly on Microsoft Word. Now, if you can't locate the original source, use this opportunity to decide whether the document needs to be in PDF format or if the content can exist on a web page instead. It is more difficult to remediate an existing PDF into a digitally accessible document than it is to edit the original. Once the document has been opened, head to the File tab and then press the Check for Issues button. Next, you'll select Check Accessibility. The Accessibility Checker panel will appear on the right side of the document and will list any errors or warnings. While we don't have time to get into specifics here in the video, just know that the Errors section closely relates to Section 508 compliance and the Warnings section closely relates to WCAG 2.0 compliance. To learn more about these, click the links in the description below this video. Our job is to clear these warnings and errors from the panel and bring the document up to a compliant state. Let's begin with learning about alternative text. Alternative text does what its name implies, adds an alternative text description to non-text content in a document. Let's explore the first image. Visually, we can tell that this is the sunrise, or the sunset, over the Golden Gate Bridge. There's no way a screen reader can determine this, so we need to add an alternative text. In this case, we'll right-click on the image and select Format Picture. The Format Picture panel appears. Here, you'll select the Layout and Properties icon and then toggle the Alt Text menu item. In many cases, both a title and a description will need to be added. Context is the most important part when providing alternative text. You must determine if the image conveys content. Images that do not convey content do not need alternative text descriptions. For example, if the image is decorative and does not add to the document, you can add a set of double quotes in both the title and the description fields, and the screen reader will skip over it. Now, if the image conveys content, and that content is described in the surrounding paragraph, a simple title such as Golden Gate Bridge would be added to the title field. If a detailed explanation of the image is needed, then that will be added in the description field. Only the author of the document can determine what specifically goes into each alt text field, but every image must have alternative text. In this case, it's a travel brochure. The Golden Gate Bridge is mentioned in the surrounding text, so we can't skip the image. The title remains as Golden Gate Bridge, but a description is needed to add more of an explanation. As soon as this is complete, you'll see that the error is removed. You'll need to do this for every image by clicking the next image and repeating the process until no images remain. Adding alt text to images is perhaps the biggest component of digital accessibility. Adding structure to a document is a close second. I'd like to show you what that means. When documents are created, the content is structured in the order it was added. If, for example, a section of text at the bottom of the document like this was added first, then followed by the introduction, a screen reader would read the content as such in the order it was added. That makes it very difficult for a person using a screen reader to understand. Adding structure to a document fixes that, and we do that by using styles. Word has built-in styles that can be accessed from the style group on the Home tab. 
you want to start at the top of the document and select the section of text that is the title. Choose title from the styles group and that style will be applied. Behind the scenes, Word is indicating to a screen reader that the document begins here. The same applies to the subheading. The rest of the document should consist of headings, either one or two, depending on if you need a hierarchy or not. When the document is complete, there should be enough structure in place to make sure a screen reader reads the content in the correct order. Now a quick note, you won't see this as an error on the accessibility pane. You'll need to manually verify that indeed all of the relative sections of the document have an appropriate heading. Now that structure is in place and images have alternative text, there's one last thing we need to address to meet Section 508 compliance, tables. If you use a table to lay out content, you're going to want to change your ways. Tables, from an accessibility standpoint, become a real barrier if used for layout. Tables can be used to convey data, but in doing so, the following must happen. The table must have a header row added to identify rows and columns. It cannot have any blank cells. It can't be nested within another table or have merged or split cells. To add a header row to a table, position your cursor anywhere inside of the table and click the Table Design tab. From there, place a check mark in the header row checkbox. Notice though that the error still shows up. You need to do one more thing. From the Layout tab, select Properties. Here, you'll go to the Row tab and check Repeat as header row at the top of each page. This will remove the error and make the table fully compliant. Similarly to images, tables need alt text. To add this, right click on your table, select table properties, and then at the top right select alt text. The alt text should be a text-based description of what is represented in the table. Now for example, third quarter earnings divided into three category columns. There are four rows of data in each column. The bottom line with tables is again to use them sparingly and keep them simple. So far, we've covered everything that will make a Word document Section 508 compliant. Alternative text, structure, and table header rows. Let's take some time now to explore additional items that also aid in accessibility and making documents easier for users with visual impairments. Starting with hyperlinks, you'll see there is an unclear hyperlink text warning. Hyperlinks should be created from a text description, not the link itself. In this instance, it's better to highlight the words Public Transit Information Site and make that the hyperlink. To do that, you'll select the words, right-click and select Hyperlink from the menu. In the address field, type the URL of the website, then click OK. Now, if you have a situation where you need the URL to appear in the document, you can add a screen tip by right-clicking on the existing hyperlink, selecting Edit Hyperlink from the menu, and then clicking Screen Tip. In this instance, if we state, takes you to the public transit information site, we're able to provide a clear description of the link for a screen reader. Click OK, and the warning is removed. Next on the list refers to the placement of images in your document. You'll see the warning state that images are not in line. Screen readers can only detect and properly read objects when they're placed in line. Assistive technologies must present users with the correct reading order when text wrapping is used or content may not be read or be read in a confusing manner. To fix this, right click on the image, select wrap text and then select in line with text. The image will be placed to the left hand side of the document with text placed below it. When complete, the warning will be removed. The final thing to do is to remove the repeated blank characters that are throughout the document. It's always advisable to use formatting, indenting, page breaks, widow and orphan controls and styles to create white space in a document. Let's remove these repeated blank characters. By doing so, the warning is removed and you're presented with a success message indicating that there are no accessibility issues found. At this point in time, it's now okay to convert your document to a PDF. 
This process takes all of the accessibility work we've done and locks it into PDF format. Let me demonstrate that for you. With your completed document, you want to head to the File menu again and select Export. Here you can choose Create PDF slash XPS document, or alternatively, you can choose the Save As command. Select a location and select PDF from the Save As Type drop-down, and then click Save. What's important here is that you don't select any option that allows you to print to PDF, because in doing so, you remove all of the accessibility fixes done to the document. The document will open up in the PDF viewer on your computer, which is typically Adobe Acrobat. Although it looks like everything has passed, you can't really tell unless you get a screen reader to read it to you. There are scenarios where the document may pass an accessibility check, but still render unreadable. There is a built-in screen reader on Word that can be added to your toolbar by going to Customize Quick Access Toolbar, selecting More Commands, then selecting Commands from All Commands, scroll down to the word Speak, and add it. Then you can select part or all of your document and hit the Speak button and it will read your document. There are screen reader extensions for Chrome, such as Chrome Vox, as well as free standalone screen reader programs such as NVDA that will read your document back to you as well. We always advise to do this before making your document public. So there you have it, a rapid fire guide to making documents Section 508 compliant. We hope you found this information valuable. It's only the start towards making content digitally accessible, but it is a critical step. Now, if you have any questions on the Section 508 law or the impact of the Towson community, please visit towson.edu forward slash accessibility, or alternatively, you can email ada at towson.edu. Thanks for watching and make it a great day. We really hope you like this video. We have so much fun putting them together and we make videos like this all the time. I want to encourage you to get in on the action by clicking the subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified when a new video hits. Now, if you have a comment about this video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and we'll get back to you.